is not available in terms of real estate in these areas in terms of these infrastructure even the right product is not available the right developer is not going to these places and uh, if you look at markets like noida and gurgaon a lot of these developers are pulling out money from the tier 2 and tier 3 towns and getting that invested into their projects in noida and in gurgaon and in other uh, metro cities okay. so the money is available but i think the right opportunity is still lacking the infrastructure is lacking and a little push from the government uh, also lacks at this moment of time okay so this is really interesting i remember last year similar time we did this tier 1 versus tier 2 city debate and there were a lot of developers who said that some of the tier 1 cities are saturated and they have got into tier 2 cities specifically because they saw great opportunities especially in a market like lucknow jaipur was another market and we do know the jaipur delhi highway the number of new projects that have come up there so mohit i mean what's happening is there a turn around now are you saying no more tier 2 it has to be tier 1 cities not at all we are actually sticking to the same thing that we are sticking to tier 2 tier 3 cities but i just want to uh, bring another point here let's let's have three categories let's just not have tier 1 and tier 2 okay. or tier 3 because it's just tier 1 versus tier 2 tier 3 let's have tier 1 and the state capitals also okay. lucknow jaipur chandigarh let's not consider it as tier 2 tier 3 because L- up itself is a country is the largest state we have and lucknow gets investment from all across up okay so let's say tier 1 state capitals and then the and rest d- then and then the rest absolutely okay fine if i compare the state capitals today state capitals are doing really well okay. i mean because the as somebody just said that investors are not coming and putting in money that's the case with the whole country investors are they have dried up the money from the sector and it's actually the end user market and that's the case with lucknow jaipur chandigarh also but at least the end user over there is coming because the whole up is the end user for lucknow okay. because the whole up okay. wants more to invest okay what are thought here this the, on this show we've debated on how investor driven a market lucknow has become so to say that lucknow has been an end user market is a complete misnomer it was and had become a huge investor driven market it may not be the case today sami i mean jaipur lucknow mohali they've all been investor driven as well See, Manisha, one very important point that I wanted to make uh, was that there is a huge affinity in tier two cities and tier three cities for residents of those cities to invest in land over built-up units. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that is one data point which is very important that needs to be captured. And if they have to make an investment, so have plotted developments done well or yeah, no? So plotted developments have. kind of done well when we talk about doing well it has it can have two uh, uh, two definitions one is unprecedented amount of plots could have been bought in these tier 2 cities over the last 2 3 years when lot of big developers launched plot development over there has appreciation really happened it happened initially from 2010 to 2013 and because it, it was investor driven and now investors are not coming into the market so it's not the momentum can't be seen and the prices are coming back and that's why we're talking about prices having dropped in tier 2 tier 3 cities as well mm-hmm. it's predominantly a end use market and if the investor market exists there it exists in plotted development where they have long term ta- long term investment uh, horizons and they don't even want to look at exits they're not they just want to hold it for life Okay, Mr. Sharma, come in here. We don't want to restrict this conversation only to North India. We'll go to specific zones later. But what is your own assessment? I mean, we are we have now divided this debate between three segments: Tier One, we are not discussing today; Tier Two, which are the state capitals, and then of course the rest of the cities, which which have some growth opportunities. As a developer. who's gone into smaller or or at least the state capitals and some of the tier 2 cities what is your own gumption i mean is is this market con- going to be dominated by a plotted development buyers and b total end users and not many investors coming in returns of less than 8% analyze is that how you should look at that market see manisha we can have a mixed kind of an outcome If you look at Shoba has presence in nine cities, five in tier two and four in tier one. Chennai, Pune, NCR, and Bangalore tier one. Mysore, Coimbatore, Calicut, Kochi, and Trichur as tier two cities. See, our experience in Trichur has been exceptionally well. It has done better than even in the Pune market, as far Shoba is concerned. Right. and it has been primarily driven because of this nri who prefers to 
come to Kerala and buy a product wherever they feel comfortable which made us to go to Calicut as well as to Kochi. Okay. We believe that in all such markets there is an organic demand, lots of money is flowing into it and at some point of time everyone wants upgradation and if there is a national player who has got better design, better concept, more comfort he is providing to the customer by way of specifications and other things, they are definitely opting for it. At the same time, these markets cannot be compared with the tier one. As someone said that, okay, when a thousand units can only be sold, we need to plan accordingly. And we believe that going forward, the tier two, tier three or the state capital market will coexist along with the tier one market. And since tier one market controls most of the demand need not be compared but we need not have to overlook the tier 2 and the state capital market also. Okay, I think you have summed it up very well, Tarun Mehrota. So, that's that's why an ATS is probably going to Bulland share because you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Is going to state capitals and tier 2 cities a risk mitigation strategy by developers or do you think that these markets do have are now ripe for organized large players and good products? I frankly think it's a, there's a huge unutilized potential which is yet waiting to be uh, kind of uh, uh, exploited. And uh, secondly, right, like Mr. Sharma said, it's a folly to compare the numbers of a tier one NCR and to a to a to a market like Varanasi or even Lucknow for that matter, because those numbers, the scale is completely different. Okay. And then the scale, the developers have to adjust. Now that's a, that's the question mark of your your depth in the market. That whether you have the bandwidth or the depth to go and sell 500 units in a market while you may be selling 5,000 units in in the NCR. So that's a business decision uh, which is up to the developer. But yes, the depths in these market definitely will be. That's why they're tier, tier two and tier three. All right. So less lesser depth. I'm going to take a very quick break. I'm going to come back. I think there are a lot more points to be made here. But also just to call out. I mean, what's happened in the past? What are some of the best performing markets? Which are the markets which haven't done well? And we are not going to go to tier three at all. We are going to restrict ourselves to state capital and some of the top tier two cities. On our way back, we'll also get the panelists to pick their favorite tier two city or state capital in terms of housing which is the one which holds the potential for some investment returns. It doesn't matter if you're buying a